Hello and welcome to Broad Lane. My name's Adrian and we're inside a Swift Comp Tiki 2021 model. Uh, we're about to shoot videos on how to work the equipment inside this vehicle uh, and there are going to be additional equipment or videos accompanying the ones that we're doing. For instance on the command it, there's going to be a detailed one on the command and various other items as we go through. Uh, but First off, I'd just like to go through the very simple bits. We have got mains electrics coupled on this vehicle. We've got gas supply and we've also got water. The leisure vehicle battery is already connected as well. And the first area we're going to come to once we've got that on this vehicle is going to be the power supply unit, which is located in this particular model on the Contiki um, on the near side lounge seat. So you raise the lounge seat up so that we can actually gain access to the power supply unit. Um, and you raise that particular flap there and the first thing you should do is to test it to make sure that when it trips out um, it does that that's what I want to do so you press the yellow button in the blue leaf trips down that is correct so this is the RCD it's an earth leakage trip and basically what you're establishing that you have got one is a main supply if it doesn't trip out you haven't got a main supply coming into the motorhome and secondly uh, anybody using the, the supply within the vehicle is going to be protected by that RCD. So that's the first things you need to do. Test it when you've got it coupled up to a main supply. If it doesn't trip out, just remember you haven't got a supply coming in, so therefore consult with the site agent. The next items are your MCBs, miniature circuit breakers, and you've got them labelled one, two and three. And that also refers back to this particular sticky label here. Uh, that also gives you the one, two, three. One is a 10 amp, number two is a 16, number three is a 10 amp again. And also it tells you what it supplies main wise within the motorhome. So that's always gonna be very close in location to the power supply unit, that label. Uh, these all again need to be in an upright position as they are following that blue lever. If any of these trip out, they just flick off like so. Just turn them back on again, take off the offending appliance which caused it to trip. Uh, and then that's a fuse, basically it's a fuse, a resettable fuse. These are 12 volt fuses and this is on the 12 volt side of the PSU. So that's mains only and this is 12 volts. If these fuses blow, you have to replace them with a brand new fuse. Um, so do carry a, a few of these as spares. They're normally providing the kit anyway from, uh, from new. The white one is a 25 amp fuse. And then we go through the various sizes, a seven and a half, a 10, a five, uh, and a 20, and another 20 there, and that's a 15, the blue one there. So different size fuses. And again, just to confirm, if you look down on this part of the list, you're gonna find those numbers one to 13. There's only one which is a 25 amp fuse. It describes it, the color as being white, and it's the battery charger. So there it is, 25 amp fuse, it's white, that's number one, that's number two, three, four, five, etc. going down the line, all the way to number 13. And at the moment, you might be able to see just inside the panel, we've got a green light, which is turned on. It's telling me that I know the charger, which is this one here, is on and it's live and it is working. So I know that the battery charger via mains electrics is working correctly. Okay. Any other light illumination that you see on the PSU, which is down on the lines below those fuses, corresponding fuse, if it's a red, it means that that particular fuse has blown. So it's a very quick visual indication when you lose something. Come down to the panel, find out which fuse is red. That's the fuse, take it off, get a new one, insert it, and that should then uh, go clear as it has done on that particular panel right now. So to actually turn on 12 volts, Going up to the command panel above the door, we actually need to operate this black switch here. It is recessed into the housing right now, so that is on. And if it was protruding out of the housing, that would be the off position. Now, when it's in storage, uh, there's no right or wrong. It depends on how you wish to communicate with the command panels, because there's an opportunity for your phone uh, to communicate to the motorhome to see the condition of the batteries and water levels and turn on heatings and what have you. And that's all applicable via your uh, app that you can have on the command system. Uh, but if this is turned in an off position, it will not communicate to your phone. So if you are looking for that system, you need it to be left on live. 
Uh, hence why the reason why we have a lot of solar panels on motorhomes now is because we need to keep the uh, internal leisure battery topped up as much as possible. Okay, so just moving on to the mains, we've got a green light which is the charger, we've got an amber light here which is the supply going to the combi boiler, and we've got a red light here but we, it's not illuminated and I don't want it to illuminate, it's just a warning light that tells you if you've got reverse polarity. Now that will mainly be on the continent as opposed to being in the UK, as in the UK we use a three pin round plug system, so really live and neutral should not be reversed. But uh, on the continent, as they only use a two pin plug, you could have that inserted in the incorrect way. So pull the plug out, turn it around the other way, insert it, and then that should go out. That's what we want to achieve. So moving from the PSU, uh, we go immediately above the door. And as I say, there is another video that does accompany these, uh, these workings. Um, but at the moment, the power supply says it's off. So you press this Swift emblem logo here and make the panel come live and you hear a couple of bleeps and other items lighting up. When we come to this bit, I just need any end user really just come straight to the home button. This is a program menu as it says it's advanced settings and it's more for the engineers setting up uh, the equipment within the vehicle. Uh, so if we've got tanks fitted, yes, in this particular case, we've got both tanks fitted, i.e. a fresh water tank and a waste water tank. It's a Dometic fridge, we've got an Audi heating, but that is all set, that is preset prior to any clients getting them. So all I want an end user to do is hit the home button, which brings you to that display there, and that's what I need you to get to. Okay, so let's just turn on lights, and I'll do this very quickly. We hit that one, and you can see that both dimmers are turned off. I'm going to turn one set of lights on and this particular light panel here is lighting. I'm going to turn it off again, just so you can see it go down. There it is, make it come live and you can see those lights coming on. And that's forward. So in this particular arrangement, we've got front cabin and we've got rear cabin or fixed bed area. And now I've just turned on the lights in the rear bed area. And I'll just turn them off again so you can see them go down and then you can see them come back on again. All right, so we're going to call them master controls, front and rear of the vehicle. And we've also got dimmer, so I can actually dim the light intensity. So if you just want to scan across to the light in front of us on the right hand side, what I'm doing now is pressing the minus button on that dimmer. And you can see that the intensity of the light has lowered. If you just come back, it's come all the way down to five. And that's the lowest I can get it. And I'm now pressing the plus. And if you just scan out again, we're going to have the intensity of the light restored back to 100%. So that's what we've got. So I can do the same on the rear. So front and rear of the vehicle. And that's just quick controls on those. We do have other lights that work on individual switches. So as we go around, I will show you where those switches are on this particular vehicle. But it may vary on the different uh, models that we go through. Right, so that's the lighting and the outer square is illuminated because I've got it live. So if I hit the awning light, for instance, I've now got a, a, a bright um, uh, yellow light on the outside and quick look down the side of the vehicle and that awning light is on. And if I turn it off again, it's that switch there. So that's on, the outer square becomes very bright saying it's on and then that's off. Okay, so I've done those two items. So just to go on the top line of images up here, uh, I'm drawing your attention to those because anything else within this is going to be covered on the actual command video that we're sending. So internally, we've got a temperature of 12 degrees in the motorhome. Externally, we've got 10 degrees outside. Humidity, it just started raining, 67% humidity. And this is the date, but it's not set right. And that would be the time. Again, it's not set right. This little image here is saying I've got um, mains electrics connected to the vehicle and I'm using my leisure battery, which is in good condition. My vehicle battery at the moment is showing zero, but it might be switched off on the ignition. So that's the reason why that's reading zero. Uh, I haven't got the ignition keys with me, but do follow the uh, other link that follows on from this uh, with the command system explained in full. Thank you.